Welcome back, everyone. Now, in our last video, we configured the two VEDGE routers to have some basic configuration templates. So if we go over to one of the routers, let's go to one of the VEDGEs. We'll just log in. I just wanted to show you that we currently have two interfaces. We have GIG00 and ETH0. So ETH0 is in VPN 512, GIG00 is in VPN 0, and GIG0 has the IP address. This is our internet underlay. In this video, what we're going to do is on both VEDGE routers, we're going to configure GIG02, and we're going to configure them to be our transport. Now, in Cisco's SD-WAN, the transport is going to be our internal network. So I have link um, GIG02 here and 02 here, and they're both connected to routers. Now, these routers are going to represent our branch sites. And the goal of this video is to get R1 to ping R2 from their respective loopbacks. Now, if we go to R1, <coughs> we have a loopback here, which we'll go back to this address later. You don't need to memorize it. We have this interface here, which is connected to the vEdge, and we have all those interfaces in OSPF. And the same thing on R2. We have our loopback, our fast Ethernet 00, and everything is in OSPF. So what we're going to need to do is we need to, to create a couple more feature templates. The first feature template we're going to create is a VPN. Now, we've seen VPNs before. We've created VPN 0 for our transport and VPN 512. In this um, case, we're going to create a service side VPN. So we're going to call it VEDGE VPN 1. Okay. Now, all we need to do is just change this to 1. And I'm going to give it a name. In this specific case, I'll call it corporate. And for this VPN, that's all we're going to need to do. We don't need to do any routes or anything like that because we're going to attach um, OSPF to this. So now that we have our VPN 1 template, let's create our VPN 1 interface. So again, we'll do VEDGE VPN 1 interface, and we're going to call this GE2. All right. We're going to set it to no shot. Now, the interface name we're going to set here because on all of our devices, we want them to be the same. Um, we could set this to device specific and in our templates define it. And now this might be right for your environment if your um, devices have different interfaces. But usually for one specific um, device type, you're going to use the, the, the uniform um, external and internal interfaces. So this is actually all we need because, um, oh, that's actually not true. We need to set the device specific. So we're going to create VPN1, IF underscore, we're going to call it G2. Okay. So that's our static IP address for the inside interface. Now, this one's going to be new, something that we haven't seen before yet in this video series, is under other templates, we're going to do OSPF. I remember got the on these routers here, they're running OSPF towards the VEDs. So let's call it VEDGE OSPF. And we can leave a lot of this stuff as default. Um, if you wanted to set a static router ID, you could. Um, if you wanted to create, you know, mess with the administrative distances. But the one thing we will want to do is we need to redistribute our OMP routes. Um, make sure to hit add here. And to explain what this is very quickly is going to be a brief overview. OMP is the routing protocol that runs over Cisco's SD-WAN. So we need to redistribute those back into OSPF. We do not need to do the opposite because by default, um, SD-WAN takes OSPF routes and redistributes them into OMP. 
So this is just doing the reverse. Um, the next thing we need to do, we don't need to do anything with the metrics. Let's go into area. Let's create a new area. So we're going to do area zero. And we're not going to do a stub or anything like that. We need to add an interface. So this is the OSPF interface that we're going to use. And again, it's G02. Nothing there. Um, if you wanted to add some, you know, options, you could. You could, you know, mess with the timers. You can go under advanced options and set authentication. Uh, but we're not going to do that. This is just, this isn't, uh, OSPF isn't the point of this video. The point is to configure the template to get data flow. So now that we have all those set, what we can do is go into device, templates, excuse me, and edit the device template. We're going to go down to service VPN. So let's select the service VPN, and there's our vEdge VPN one. Now we need to do two things, add our VPN template, which we created, and then add our OSPF template. All right, now let's update. And what's gonna happen here when we update is we have the two V edges already um, attached to this template. So any changes we made to the template, we have to push those changes to the V edges. So let's start with V edge one. And all we really have to do is add our inside IP address to our GE02 interface. 10, 11, 1, 1, slash uh, 24. So we'll update that one. And then for two, 10, 22, 1, 1, slash 24, update. Let's click next. We'll verify both um, the syntax for both the edges. And again, this isn't um, actually what I, what I wanted to show you. This is a good opportunity to do that. So I verified the first one. Let me verify the second one just to make sure there's no syntax errors. But what we could do is we could do a config diff. Let's do a side by side diff and we can take a look. Here's the stuff that we're adding. We're adding a new VPN. The name is corporate um, router OSPF. We're redistributing OMP to it. We're adding an interface and there's the IP address of the interface. So let's go ahead and configure and we have to confirm that we're doing this to two devices. I'll hit refresh. And now we're pushing down our template changes to both routers. So I will go ahead and pause the video. Um, it actually shouldn't be too much longer. I just like to spam the, the refresh button. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and pause the video. I'll come back in a moment when it's completed. All right, so our templates are completed. It actually took about five seconds after I hit the pause button. So now that we have our, our V edges set what we can do is let's go down back to our current v edge and we could see we had just this interface configured we didn't have g02 configured so let's take a look at that again and make sure that it worked so now we can see g02 10 11 uh 1.1 1 .1. so let's do a show ospf neighbors and the neighborship hasn't come up yet Let's check uh, our, uh, sorry, this is our one actually. Um, this actually paused. All right, let me, let me pause the video. It, it is software, so it might be taking a minute. Um, I may have to log back into R1. So let me just pause the video real quick. I'll give it like 30 seconds, then I'll bring it right back. So my OSPF neighbors aren't coming up and I realized why. Um, instead of editing the video and going back and pretending I'm perfect, I'm just gonna show you guys what happened. Under my feature templates, under VEdge OSPF, let's go ahead and edit the template. 
this is a common pitfall and I've made this mistake so many times. When you add the area and then add the interface, you have to hit add here. <laughs> if you just hit save, it's not gonna work. So I hit add, let me update. I don't need to add any more device specific things. So let's take a look at the config diff. And I probably should have caught this when I did my side by side diff. But I can see area zero interface. So I'll just confirm we're good on the edge two. Once it finishes, I will push the template. Confirm configuration changes. Give it another pause and then resume once that's done. All right, so both our template pushes were a success. We're going to go down to the edge one. And what I'm going to do is a show OSPF neighbor again from here. And now we can see that we're neighbors on our GE02 link. So if I go to R1, Show IP OSBF neighbor. We can confirm the same thing. Let's check out VH2. Show OSBF neighbor. You're up as well. So from our ones perspective, we can see we have two OE2 routes, 10.22.1 and 10.22.22.1. So that is our twos. Show IP and loopback loop back one. So let's go ahead and hang over. We'll do it from our own loopback, which uh, I believe is loopback zero. Let me just double check that. Loopback one. Sorry. So we'll ping 10, 22, 22, 1. We'll source it from our loopback one. And we can ping from site to site over our SD WAN. Um, if we do a trace for that same thing, you notice we go right up to the V edge. And then we go to the second V edge and then to router two. So if we go back to our diagram, we can see pretty much what we're doing. So all that work that we've done before, we can finally ping across. Um, it seems like a lot of setup with not a huge payoff for now, but as you start adding more and more routers, it becomes very easy. Um, so what I'm gonna do on the next video is now that we're passing traffic, is let's spin up this MPLS. Uh, Cause right now, if we go to, our V edge, um, show IP, actually, let me first, let's just do show IP route on the V edge, because I just wanted to show you that we have our static route connected OSPF. So we can see here our OSPF routes as well. And then we also have OMP routes. So that's SD-WAN's um, routing protocol. But what I did want to show again is show int tab. As of right now, we have our internet up and running. So let's bring up MPLS and we'll push it out to both routers so we can see, uh, we'll just do a simple like load balancing or something like that. And we'll see how we can easily add a second transport to all of our sites.